Hello everyone, Judy here, and I'm just going to do a quick guide on Garland Data. Um, a lot of people haven't heard of this uh, resource. Um, I've been using it for years while playing Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, it's helped me a lot through making crafting lists and gathering lists and other various useful um, things throughout the years. So I just thought I should share it with you guys because um, a lot of people don't know how to use it. I, I am aware that there are like other um, other resources that are very similar to Garland Data. Um, Garland Data also encompasses, uh, there's also Garland Bell and, Gar and FF14 Fisher, but uh, I don't really use these as much. I actually just mostly use Garland Data, so I I'm going to go over that today. Um, so I'm just going to kind of casually go through the website um, and kind of go over the types of things you can find on here. I'm going to uh, get rid of uh, this list. I'm going to make a new list. Let's say uh, Garland Data Guide. There we go. So I'm going to put Garland Data Guide. I'm delete this list. Uh, you just saw me make a new list here. Pretty easy. There's a search bar here. I'll go over that in a second. Uh, there's different stuff here, like different patches and things you can look up specifically. You can see stuff from every patch. A lot of useful little things here and there. Certain actions, whatever you want to look at. Uh, this isn't really what I use this for, but it can be used for this. Uh, also, like, you know, finding quests and seeing, you know, where the quests are from and just trying to overall navigate. You have a lot of options. So just, you know, whenever you have free time, if you want to go through this, feel free. You know, even the fates are listed on here. Um, gathering nodes and stuff are pretty useful. But uh, for the most part, I don't usually access it from up here. Just know that it is an option. So not using the database, but using the tools, because that's, you know, what I find most useful. Um, we're going to make a new list. So I'm going to pretend to craft something. Let's say I want to make, uh, okay, let's say I want to make a crafter set, right? And I don't know the name of it, it's brand new, and I'm not sure what it's called, what I can do. I could say, okay, um, let's say I have uh, an armorer, right? I'm playing armorer. I want to uh, have a nice set. If I go to the right here, this is the late game stuff that, uh, you know, you can pretty much used. This is the late level 80 newest gear. So I can click on here and say, okay, I need a facet raising hammer. So I'm going to click on this little Atomos right here, and they're just going to suck in everything I click on. So uh, I'm going to click on this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> click on this, 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 this. Now, with the rings, I want to put two. That's something that a lot of people tend to forget when they start crafting. They make, like, the whole set, but they forget to put two rings. Because you can not you can uh, wear duplicates of these rings. They're not, um, they're not unique items or anything like that. So you should be fine. Um, so that's just one example of how I would get it. If I wanted to do a crafter set of a different class or maybe, like, a gatherer set or something like that, that's when I would use... Uh, you know, I would just click on the icon. Now, remember, I clicked on endgame equipment to find that. If I wanted to do it leveling equipment, let's say I had a machinist and I was maybe level, let's say I'm level 15. Let's say I'm a level 15 machinist here. Down on this row, I can click on this and it'll, um, basically it'll, t it'll have me uh, know what set is appropriate for that level. And also, uh, you can toggle Grand Company equipment. So if you want to go the cheapo way, you can definitely do this. Uh, it really depends on your preference. Okay, so I'm going to click on the Atomos and shrink them down. Uh, I don't need them right now. As you notice, all the equipments and tools, uh, it'll show me what stats I'll get here from this gear set. And when I go, and this is without melds, by the way. This is without melds. Um, this here on this side, I believe is normal quality. And then on this side is, uh, HQ. So just kind of keep that in mind. If my whole set is normal quality, this is what I'm looking at. If it's, if the whole set is HQ, this is what I'm looking at. So we'll go to shops 
and see what we need. Up here, we can see that we're probably spending about 18,925 gil if I needed to buy things from the shop. You can get this from the Crystarian. It tells you who from. Dotard is an NPC, and there's a map showing you exactly where to find this guy, right here. So if you're ever unsure of where to find something on a list that you need, you can definitely click on um, the item and, it, or if you don't click on the item, uh, well, you could and then hit sources and then shops, but a faster it would be, oh, this is an NPC, you click on them and then you look at the map. Um, so let, let's look at items here. I'm going to choose a better example. So we need 260 Algon tombstones. One of these leather pieces here, a bunch of white crafter scripts, white gatherer scripts, and bicolor gemstone. Now, keeping this in mind, we don't necessarily want to start gathering everything right away. We want to know what we already have before we start, obviously. So in order to do that, you can go to crafting. You go to the crafting tab, and let's say you uh, change display mode. You can see, okay, this I, to get this, I need these items. And uh, to get this, I need these items. You know, it shows in a different, kind of like in a tree, um, kind of similar to what they implemented in game a little bit. Uh, I actually prefer this display mode, the expanded, because when you hit it, uh, by the way, you can cycle through these. So you can like mark off, oh, I have this, or and notice it adjusts and recalculates every time. Um, so I, I like to hit it twice. And let's say I have, uh, let's say I have some, I'm going to use an example here, uh, dimethrite ore, uh, ore, sorry. Uh, what I could do, let's say I only have six of them. I could put six and then it recalculates and everything is like re-updated again. So because I, I have six, I only need two. Uh, this number here is how many you need, by the way. And then you have eight in total is what your goal is. Now, once you complete that, all you have to do is hit this check mark and boom, check mark, boom. So when you, when you hit the green on it, it'll just be like, oh, cool, you have it. Now, if we're talking, now these are just basic gather items, like raw, like super raw material, bare bones, nothing is crafted. Uh, this is super raw materials we're talking about here. Now, sometimes you're not going to have only super raw materials. You're going to have items that are already crafted. Like, let's say you already had this, like, steel ingot right here, this tungsten. Notice that it changed up here. You don't need this tungsten ore if you have this, right? So it just automatically updates. It's super useful. Uh, I really like the way it looks visually, uh, on my screen at least. It's very, uh, very cool. Uh, I can also write a note, by the way, just a, just a side note. I can write... Uh, a little note here and uh, you know so it, let's say for some reason uh, like let's say you need an item and a friend says hey I have some of that item but I'll give it to you later or I'll send it to you later I'll be like oh okay so a uh, friend said they will send it send let's say H deep later so that way you can write like little notes. Of course you can put like a little, I, you can't really put like bullet points, but you can kind of put a dash if you need to and just kind of keep your stuff organized. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that if you already have one of these items, you can just, um, well, I mean, I guess you could just, you know, hit it and then all these items would just kind of adjust. So let's, let's unselect everything, right? Let's say I made, I'm going to scroll down. By the way, uh, if you're unsure, uh, like let's say you want the whole block to, uh, uh, there we go. If you want the block to kind of stay open and not, you know, have like multiple layers, you can still scroll down and see a lot of this stuff. So um, I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit. So if I were to zoom out, you know, you kind of have everything's kind of small, but if you zoom back in, it's pretty dynamic and it'll change. So let's, uh, just another example. Oh yeah, here, here's the thing. If I have the, uh, basic code of crafting, I clicked on that. This one here is still going to need something. Um, so what this shows is that when I, um, like since these are both, uh, 
what's the word for it? Weaver items. Because this is purple, I have to hit this again to make it green. Uh, purple items usually, uh, basically you have the items, from, from what I remember, it's been a while, but from what I remember, if your item is purple, it just shows that you don't quite have enough items, but you need to make, like, you have to craft something uh, elsewhere, and then you're able to complete the item. So, uh, yeah, it really depends on what you're doing. And let me see if there's anything else I want to go over. Yeah, you can, of course, collapse these. So whatever step you're on, you can definitely work on it from there. It's pretty cool. You can close that up. Uh, let's see. We went over the note. Eorzea time. If you want to know what time is Eorzea time, there you go. But I figure since you're probably in-game anyway, you're going to know that. Uh, Skywatcher. Okay, so Skywatcher is pretty useful. Uh, even outside the game, like if you're trying to debate on whether or not you should lock in just for a certain weather condition for fishing, uh, this is definitely something to look at. Um, it can be useful, so maybe take a look at it some other time. Uh, we went over these, and if I wanted to clear the list, I could. Yes, I want to clear the list. You can also clear the list by clicking here. I'm going to show a, another example here. Let's say I'm, uh, I'm going to use a search bar this time. Let's say I wanted to make a, um, I'll make a lamp. Let's say I want to make a lamp. I found the lamp, clicked on it, it went right here. Uh, or like a bed or a bunch of other random stuff, right? We made some, we have some random items. Also, you have filters here if you click on this little icon. So if you want to put, you know, if you want to look for something really specific, but you're not sure the name of it, but you know, like, some of this information that could definitely help. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, yeah, so anything like this, uh, like I said, shops, remember, this NPCs, NPC items. Uh, apartment merchants. So if you notice here, not everything is bought with gill. Not everything is bought with tomes. Sometimes it's void drakes. You have a few different options. So depending on what you're crafting, uh, the source of it is going to be unique and it'll definitely tell you. Now this copper ore, you know, you can get it from the cogent material supplier, but if you click here for co copper ore and you see like the, um, the shops, there's way more places than just there that you could get it. So just because an item on this list shows only one vendor that sells the item does not necessarily mean that's the case. So I'm going to go over this one more time because I did it kind of fast. So you click on the item. Uh, so in this case, let's say I'm doing copper war, you click on the item, go to sources and uses, and then you can go to shops and you see every shop in the game and how much they're selling it for. Uh, if you're gathering it, okay, so this is, this is something I want to go over. Let's say I'm gathering uh, copper ore. Right? Let's say I'm like, you know, screw these NPCs, I'm not paying them, they can't take my money, I'm gonna gather it myself, right? So what I'll do is I'll go to the gathering, and I see that there's two places I can get it. I can either get it in Central Thanalan, I can click here, get some info, and I can see, okay, this is what the requirements for this node, this is where it is, great. Now if I wanted to go to this place, uh, I can see, also see the requirements here at this node. It looks like they're the same. All right, cool. And then also uh, the order of which you see these uh, things listed here on, on the nodes is exactly the same order as in game for um, other items. So like, let's say I'm getting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a little harder example here. Uh, I'm going to keep this open though. Let's say I'm trying to find Everdeep either sand, right? Kind of an older item, but you know, still fits the uh, purpose. So market price, I can open Mogboard. Uh, that doesn't exactly uh, bring me where I want to be, per se, but it brings you to... Um, I, I actually haven't spent much time here, but you can see different retainers and stuff. You can see a lot of the prices. So if you want to know what's going on on the market board, this is definitely useful, and you can uh, definitely check, like, cross-world stuff. Um, if I wanted to go back, let's see if I can go back. Can I go back? Oh, hold on a second. I'm going to go back. Okay. So, uh, 
let's say I don't want to mess around with the market price. I can actually check this and type it in, and it'll calculate that, by the way, when you put it into a list. Um, see, we have Scripps Exchange, either or reduction, so Sweatfish. We know it comes from Sweatfish. Um, let's say we're going to gather it. So we have Stonefly Larva, so we know what kind of bait we need. We know exactly where to go. Now, when you click on something like this, and you need to know, like, the location... Uh, it'll show you not only the types of fish and things you can get at the location, but if you click on the map, you can see exactly where you should be. As in step, and in the center around the circle, you can get this fish. I know I've gotten it multiple times. It also shows you the type of hook set you should be using. Um, now in game, they've added like the exclamation marks to make it a little easier to tell if you should be using a precision or powerful hook set. But uh, this is still very useful. And also, just a little side note, if there's any requirements to gathering an item, you can see the tomes up here next to the icon, or um, underneath the icon, you can see, okay, I need that. Now, the cool thing about this is if I go to Sources and Uses, it'll show you what it unlocks. Okay, I got this item. What does it unlock? And it has a bunch of different uh, lists of items and stuff. So I know I'm going kind of fast, uh, but this is, I mean, this resource has so much, so much data, has so much stuff that it, it's just unreal. I've used it for years, like I said. Um, so, I mean, definitely consider it if you don't like other resources or tools that you've used. I know there's like, um, I think it's like FF Crafter or something like that. And there's just like a, a different website for like, Crafting simulations, that's not, crafting simulations isn't something you're really going to find on here. Uh, it's just a big database of pretty much every NPC, every quest, every fate, every item uh, in the game. Even items you can't get anymore are in this database. So just keep that in mind. Also, uh, if you're not sure what... Like, let's say you have an item in your inventory, and you've never seen it before, you don't know how it ended up there, and you're like, gosh, I don't know what to do with this. Well, what you could do is you could type in the item, let's say you have Everdeep Either Sand, you have no idea where that's from. <laughs> and you can say, okay, what can I do with this? You go to crafting ingredients, you look down, you're like, oh, okay, I can make any of these things. Now... Uh, based off what you find here, you might decide, eh, I'll just, I'll just sell the item on the market board for exactly what it is. Um, or you could say, hmm, maybe I'm going to hand this to a friend, maybe they could use it and make one of these items. Now, I know this is a little bit older into the items, but, uh, you know, it's just an example. Okay, so it looks like, I think I went over pretty much everything. Oh yeah, you can, you can collapse this, I think I showed this earlier. Uh, now, if you close the tools and you go to sync. Uh, this is a this is a server sync. You can sync your stuff to the server. I've never used it personally because I find that as long as I don't delete my cache uh, on my browser, I, my stuff pretty much retains. So even if you leave the page, you can come back and it'll still be there. Uh, let's see about settings. Okay, so settings is a little bit more um, nitpicky. So let's say you want to do a bunch of settings, you want to change stuff, you can change, um, you know, pretty much, there's a lot of things you can look out for and you can filter through. Uh, of course, you have to go through your old time. Um, but what I find most useful is the alerts because you can change the tone of the alerts and, um, you know, depending on the available tones, Warning tones. Warning tones are useful for when you're gathering stuff, so I'll show that in a second. Also, if you're colorblind, this could be useful. And there's just a bunch of other random stuff here. Oh yeah, you can change the language. I don't. Let me see. Okay, so the same language is as the game. That's great. Um, maybe one day they'll add Spanish. <laughs> I know that's a popular complaint. Uh, sorry guys. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list. I'm gonna make a new list. Make a list and I'm going to type in um, actually I'm trying to think. Maybe I want to make a maybe not make but gather. Uh, I'm gonna put in grade three uh, let's go with 
topsoil. Let's say we're let's say we're going with a top three grade soil. By the way, I can just take this and uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. So if you have like a big window, you can just click and drag it into here with the Atomos open. Uh, just a fun fact. So let's see. I'm going through here. I'm gathering. Okay. So oh, whoops. Ah. He's still sucking up everything. <laughs> By the way, you can see like, you know, what you could do with ventures uh, to get this. Um, yeah, so let's say I'm going to gather the grade three Lanotian topsoil. You can see the different, um, the lists here, basically. And you know that the fire cluster is going to be on three, as indicated here. And this topsoil will be on slot eight. So when you gather, keep that in mind. Now, it looks like uh, since this bar is green right now, it looks like it's up for another 13 seconds. So I have to keep that in mind uh, when I'm going to gather. And if you want to put a little sound, you can play audio for desktop notifications. And that's what that setting for uh, was up here. You can click on this. And then when uh, the item is ready to be collected, it'll make a noise like I want to say about you know, a few, maybe like a minute or like not even a minute. It depends on, I think you can adjust the setting on how long until it rings, but you can adjust it. And then let's say you're doing something in the background, maybe some homework, maybe something that really uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> or maybe you're just watching a YouTube video like mine. Uh, then of course you can hear the it play in the background and you're like, oh, I gotta go gather that thing. And then you can quickly look and you'll see a green bar down here indicating, okay, I need to gather that. And of course you can just click on the map and see exactly where you can gather it. So it's just, you know, just really, really useful tool. I've used it, like I said, I've used it for years. The nice thing is you can kind of click and drag and move the different, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you can move your um, your stuff up here. So like, let's say you decide, oh, I'm gonna put this up here just for safekeeping, you can. Um, the only thing about putting stuff in this area uh, is that it, you can't easily remove it. So if you wanna bring it and drag it back here, it's gonna give you a hard time. Um, but yeah, you can definitely put things up here above your search bar. Uh, just to kind of um, go through stuff and look at stuff. If, especially if you don't want it like in the way of like a mess here. So uh, one last thing I wanted to add is that let's say you're going to, uh, let's say we're working on airships. Oh, uh, submarine. Oh, okay. Let's try... I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> let's say we're working on submarines. I'm going to open this up now. And let's say we want... Let's say we're making a shark class stem, right? Let's say... Uh, sorry, not stem. Stern. Let's say we want to work with our fellow FC mates or something and try to collaborate and work uh, on it together. Let's say you put it on the list. You know what you need. You're crafting. And uh, let's say we have... Uh, maybe a few of these items. We'll have a few of these items. We already have this or that. You know, maybe a couple things. And these are the only things you still need. Maybe you don't have cobalt ore or whatever the reason, whatever the situation. But you know the ultimate goal is this. What you can do is you can click on the share button right here and you can copy the link. Oh, yeah. So you can copy and share the link. And when you share the link, looking like this, the person will put it into their browser and it'll look exactly like this. They'll know exactly what you still need, what you don't need, and what you already have and how far along you are. They'll have all the answers to those questions. So if you ever want to share your list with someone and collaborate and try and work together for mats, this is definitely the way to go. Um, well, I hope that's everything. I'm just going to quickly... Oh yeah, so this, I just want to go over this real quick. Um, the links here are kind of useful. So if you need something else, uh, or actually I'll go over some of these that I'm familiar with. Uh, Gamerscape, usual lore wiki stuff. Uh, let's see. 
team craft yeah shared crafting list so if you don't want to use this let's say you don't like the garland data version of the crafting shared list because of the links or whatever uh, you can maybe use uh, team craft team craft is pretty useful for that purpose as well Ariala is really good for um, melds and trying to tell people like if someone asks you oh what melds should I use for this and you're trying to figure out and do the math you can ask them their stats put it into the whole thing and then recreate it uh, hypo recreate a hypothetical situation where you would know what melds they need uh, I haven't messed with this I don't know about this uh, Oh yeah, the chocobo color calculator is pretty useful if you're trying to dye your cal your uh, chocobo a certain color and you don't want to waste a lot. Uh, it's definitely useful. Gardening, okay, so gardening is super useful too if you're trying to get started and maybe you don't know much about uh, gardening. It's very helpful. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. And then of course the fish tracker app is useful if you're just fishing and you're trying to get really specific stuff. Theory crafting stuff. I don't really mess with these, to be honest with you. Um, but they're, I'm sure they're pretty useful as well. And yeah, I don't, I don't mess with data mining either. But of course, you know, like I said, there's a bunch of other stuff here. I'm sure maybe even some of you guys are um, familiar with. So those links are helpful. And then of course the Discord. Uh, this Discord, uh, there's a Discord for Garland tools. Uh, so if you want to join the Discord, feel free. That's what that button's for. I'm assuming it'll take you right there, so... Yeah, feel free. I mean, they seem like cool people. I've been part of the Discord for a while. And, uh, yeah, so I think that's everything. And, of course, you can clear your list here by clicking that X. Also, uh... Oh, actually, one last thing. Kind of a minor detail that's not really that important, but still cool to know. If I'm typing in like the name of a class, it'll automatically adjust to that icon. So if you're trying to adjust or make a bunch of stuff, uh, like let's say I want to make an armorer list, it'll automatically show the icon. So it'll also do it for uh, classes. So yeah, if you're if you're gathering stuff and making different crafts for multiple people all at the same time, this is a great resource to kind of have them all layered and they all they don't conflict with each other and you can just have it up all right well i hope this uh video was helpful i uh try my best to go over stuff that you know I've just, like i said i've been using this for a long time i find it useful a lot of people prefer things like uh team craft or uh you know, some other resources as well. It's really personal preference. I like being able to like drag everything around and just, I, I just used it first, you know, like, like I said, I'm used to it. This is what I've been using. If it works for you, that's great. If not, that's fine, you know? So, uh, that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, I hope that you guys stay safe out there because I know, you know, people are getting sick. So of course, uh, good luck to everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.